The Holy Spirit is not just an influence, a force, or a power. He's actually a person who wants to change your life. Welcome here, welcome back. Here we are again. Uh, we're dealing with a big topic. It's called the Trinity Controversy. This is a series that we're doing at Whitehorse Media. Uh, we've already done part one, two, and three, and part four is about the Holy Spirit, about his nature. Is he just a force? Is he a person? And ultimately, what does this book have to say? I'm here with Kim Kerr, who is the uh, director of Clear Voice. Is that right? It is right. Yes. yes. And your website is Clear Voice U, U. with the letter U. Is yeah. it is U for com. is U for university or use for university? Yeah. It's a it's an online school. There's videos. There's questions. Um, every place where we quote historical documents, there's a link there where you can go to the actual historical document. Uh, so everything's well documented, and, so, and you can get to them. Yes. So your website is designed to fortify. God's people, not just with biblical truth, with primarily Bible truth, but also with the historical references behind uh, the history, behind many of our, our biblical teachings. Yes, it, um, we want to re recognize that as the times we're going into, we're going to have to defend our beliefs. The world is going to be doing everything it can to destroy our beliefs and destroy uh, our reasoning for why we do what we do. And so if we're going to have to stand before kings, Congress, who knows? Who Senate, the, House. The Senate, House. Uh, we don't want to be there not knowing right. what we believe and how to show that's it right. because that's what we're going to be asked. And so that's what the website's for, to help us defend our faith. Yes, excellent, excellent. And so what we're doing here in this series is we are... Uh, looking deeply into the biblical truths concerning the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Uh, the first program, we looked a little bit at the scriptures and we also did a, sort of a quick overview of Christian history and even looked at some Adventist history mm -hmm. and what, what some of our early, uh, what we call pioneers, how they opposed a uh, perverted understanding of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And now we are going into the Word. Because ultimately, Kim, as you mentioned, we've got to be able to, to defend our faith, and we've got to be able to do it from the Bible. Amen. This is our primary source mm -hmm. uh, of information. And so whatever side of the Trinity controversy you are on, uh, we want to make an appeal to you to make sure whatever side you're on that it's the biblical side and that it's scriptural. And of course, there aren't really a whole lot of different sides out there. There really is one side, <laughs> that's right. and that, which is the true side, and our challenge is to find out what side that is. And that's why, that's why we're here. We know that this is a very controversial subject. It divides, it has divided churches, it mm -hmm. had divided friends. And families. Um, and yes. families. Um, there's a lot of uh, throwing of stones and rocks and accusations about the church and what the church believes, what we believe, and there's just a lot of uh, smoke, <laughs> and there's fire as well. Mm -hmm. And so we are trying to tackle this issue and to look at the Word of God as our ultimate authority. So this uh, segment, Kim, we want to focus on the Holy Spirit. Uh, there are different views about the Holy Spirit. Some believe there really is no actual Holy Spirit. Uh, some believe the Holy Spirit is real, but he's a force, he's an influence, he's a power. Uh, some believe he just emanates from the Father and the Son. And then there are others that believe that he's an actual uh, individual. He's a person, he's an entity mm -hmm. who thinks and who speaks and who does things. So let's look at that. And uh, probably the, as I, I mean, I know there's lots of verses in the Bible, but I, I really want to focus at least to start on John 14, 15, and 16, because in these verses, in these chapters, 
Jesus really speaks more about the Holy Spirit than uh, in any other place as far as a, a compact section, John 14, 15, and 16. So where are we going to start? Um, well, why don't we start... I think it's verse 16 that... Is that where you want to go? Yeah, okay. sure. Let's, let's start there. So verse 16 says... And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide or dwell with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Right, and there's one more line there. Read, read that last line, First, verse 18. Verse 18. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Right, so let's, let's talk about these verses. So in verse 16, Jesus says, I, and that's himself, the Son of God, I will pray the Father, so there's the Son and the Father, and he shall give you another, and you stressed that word when you read it, another, I felt that punch there, <laughs> another comforter that he may, that he, may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth. So there's the Holy Spirit. So as we look at verse 16, as we've looked at other verses, like Matthew 28, 19, Jesus talked about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, we see this in many different verses. And, and here we have Jesus speaking, and there's the Father he refers to, and then there's the Holy Spirit, whom he calls another comforter. Mm -hmm. So it seems to me that Whatever the nature of the Holy Spirit is, he is another, isn't that right? Yes. So it can't be the Father and it can't be Jesus because he mentions them, you know, I will pray the Father. That's right. And then another, so that someone other than right, the Father separate. and the Son. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, and we know from, from the study of the Bible that we have a Father in heaven and we approach our Father through the Son Jesus is our mediator, he's our sacrifice, who paid the price for our sins, he rose from the dead, he went to heaven, he's our intercessor, intercessor. he's our great high priest, and Jesus also taught us to pray for the Holy Spirit to come and help us to understand the Father and the Son mm -hmm. and other Bible truths. So it seems to me that there are three that are there in verse, uh, verse 16, and, and again, he, Jesus refers to him, I will give you another comforter and he, that he may abide with you forever. So Jesus doesn't just say it. It's Correct. not just a, it's just not just an influence or a force or a power. He does have power, he does have influence, but uh, he is a he. Yes. That's it's right there. And then verse 17, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knows him neither knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. So I've got, let's see, one he in verse 16, uh, we have him in verse 17, him in verse 17, um, there's a lot of hymns and he's. A lot of hymns and he's. Right. You know, the, the interesting thing about this verse and what Jesus is saying here is that the world doesn't know him. So if it's just a power or an right. influence, how do you know? How do you interact with? How do you, um, you know, if, if I just get introduced to you, Steve, uh, I, I don't know who you are, I'll sit down, I'll talk with you, I'll learn about your background, mm -hmm. etc. I'll come to know you. Mm -hmm. And so in this verse here, it's the world doesn't know him. The world has never been, been um, talked to by him or convicted by him. And then, but Jesus says, you do know him. So there's, right. he, he's saying there that the, the Christian, the disciple, the follower of Jesus knows the Holy Spirit. He's acquainted with the Holy right. Spirit. It reminds me of what is in the same Genesis that Adam knew his wife. Yes. And then the result was Cain. Yes. And then Abel. Mm -hmm. So knowing. It's a close. That's right. Involves real 
uh, close interaction between Adam and Eve to produce a baby. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there's it's uh, it's a deep it's a deep relationship. Now in verse eighteen, Jesus continues, and we already read this, but look at it again. He said, "I will not leave you com- comfortless. I will come to you." Mm-hmm. And I've been dialoguing with one particular person, and this person's uh, view is that uh, the Holy Spirit is a person, but that person is Jesus. That the Holy Spirit is really Jesus in an invisible form, uh, an omnipresent form, whereas Jesus in his physical form is limited. He can't go everywhere because he's in the form of humanity. And as I look at that, uh, my response to that as I've thought about this, uh, you just go right down to verse 23, where Jesus uh, was speaking to uh, Judas, and he said, if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our abode with him. So here's a we and an hour. And so when you look at the context, it's when the Holy Spirit comes to a person, Jesus not only, not only says, I will come to him, but he says, we will come to him. And the we would be the Father and the Son. And so as I see it, it doesn't, just because Jesus says, I will come to you, doesn't mean that he is the same as the Holy Spirit or the same, the same person, the same mm-hmm. person mm-hmm. but that they are so closely connected that when the Holy Spirit comes, it's just like Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming because just like in John, I think it's uh, chapter 10, verse 30, where Jesus said, I and my Father are one. We are so closely connected that when the Holy Spirit comes, Jesus comes, and it's not just Jesus, it's the Father too. And that's why I emphasized there in verse 16, I, the Father, and another comforter. So the another means it can't be the Son and it can't be the Father because it's another. So the idea that the Holy Spirit and Jesus are basically the same, uh, Jesus himself contradicts that in verse 16. Yeah, they're they're not the same. And and if because he said, I will come to you, if that means that he is, that the Holy Spirit is Jesus, then when he says, uh, we will come to you, does that mean then that the Holy Spirit is Jesus and the Father? Uh, and I don't think people believe that. Go that far. No, they don't go that far. But so I think we need to look at, we need to put, uh, compare scripture with scripture mm-hmm. and not take one text and then come to conclusions that are different from, from these, other, these other passages. Here a little and there a little. That's right. Now let's go on to verse 27, or no, verse 26. Jesus says more about the Holy Spirit in John 14, 26, but the comforter which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. So there's all three of them again. Yes. He, there's another one of those he, he or hims, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said to you. So again, it it sure seems to me by looking at the text that the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, brings the words of Jesus to us. Mm Mm-hmm but he is not synonymous with Jesus. And he teaches. He is not just a power. He teaches you all things and somehow is able to, those things that are stored in there, whatever Jesus has said to us, whatever we have put in our minds, uh, what scriptures we've put in our minds, those somehow the Holy Spirit can touch certain parts of our brain and bring (laughs) those things to the forefront of our consciousness uh, so he teaches and he brings these things to our remembrance. Right, That's the, not just a power. Right, and what he does is he brings to us the words of Christ yes. to our minds. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, John 15, verse 26, continuing, Jesus says, But when the Comforter is come, whom I, whom I will send to you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceeds from the Father, he shall testify of me. So again, it just sure seems to me as I look at this that there are three of them. Mm -hmm. There's the Holy Spirit, there's the Father, and there's Jesus, and the Holy Spirit is a he, and he will testify of me. Jesus doesn't say he is me. No. He says he will testify of me. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, okay, go to John 16, verses 7 to 14. Want to read verse 7? 16, 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. So, same thing. This is all consistent. Yes. And in verse 7, Jesus says, I'm telling you the truth. So, either this is the truth or it isn't the truth. It just says this is false or it's, or it's right. And we know if we believe in Christ that this is the truth. And he is talking about the Comforter or the Holy Spirit and he says, I, that's the Son, will send him, that's the Holy Spirit, to you. So again, we have, we have three in these, in these verses. Uh, in verse 8, when he, when he is come, he will reprove or convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more, of judgment because the prince of this world is, is judged. The prince of this world wants to confuse us. Yeah, man. He wants to mix us up and lead us away from Scripture. Uh, that's his, his modus operandi, his goal. Uh, verse 12, Jesus said, I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, there again, he's a he, he, another one, will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. Kim, as I was looking at that, it just, I mean, I see right there yes, that himself. the Spirit is, is uh, his, he's a himself. Mm -hmm. He's a person. Yes. He has a being. He is not Jesus. And Jesus says he will not speak of himself, but whatever he will hear, that's he hears from Christ, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me. Again, he is not me. Mm -hmm. He will glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and show it to you. As I look at all these verses, I see a father, I see a son, and I see a Holy Spirit. I don't understand all of the details about all of their uh, you know, natures, but as I look at my Bible, it's pretty clear that there are three of them, and they are so closely connected that when one speaks, it's just like the other one speaks. When one comes, it's like the other one is there, and they are all working together as one, just like we read in Genesis, uh, in the beginning, God, Elohim, which is a plural word, and God said, let us, there's three, or at least, at more least, than one, yeah, anyway. at least there's more than one in that verse, uh, let us make man in our image. What um, I wanted to point out here too, himself, that whatsoever he hears, so he's got, he can hear something. It's not just a force, not just a power. He's, right. he's actually listening and being able to reformulate thoughts. And it says, I will take, or he will take from me and give it to you. That's an intermediary uh, you know, an, an intermediary person here, not something that is, uh, again, just a power or just a force or just an influence. Yeah, and I, I don't want to go into all the details, but I've told this story many times that in the, in the year 1986, I was going through a terrible crisis in my life. I was living in San Francisco. My life was very dark. I was very confused. I had a lot of questions about things, and in in an hour of desperation, I got on my knees one night, turned off the lights in my little apartment, I wasn't married at that time, and I prayed earnestly and I said, God, you've got to help me because if you don't help me, I'm, I'm in trouble and I'm just going to go back out to the world. I can't handle this pressure. I was a Christian pastor at that time, and in the midst of my uh, desperation, this still small voice spoke to my conscience and said, pray for the spirit of truth to guide you into all oh, truth. truth. And I thought about that and I thought, oh, okay, I'll do it. And in 1986, I started praying for the spirit of truth, like Jesus says here, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. And I started doing that, and Kim, I've been doing that uh, ever since 1986. I just keep doing it. This morning when I woke up, I rolled over on my bed 
and my habit is to just to just pray. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I pray for again and again is the Holy Spirit. And I tell you, it, this has changed my life. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the confusion cleared away. Uh, the doubts cleared away. Eventually, peace came into my heart. It didn't happen right away. It was a process. But I knew that God was leading my life, and he helped me to understand the Bible. He led me to the teachings of Jesus. He helped me to understand more of the cross, what Jesus did for me, his forgiveness, his grace, his power. And little by little, my confusion just cleared up. And uh, I'm never going back. And I can't pray enough for the Holy Spirit. It has been such a blessing to me. Uh, and there's just something about truth when your mind starts learning more about the truth. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth Such will set you fruit. free. There's uh, three chapters here that Jesus devotes to the Holy Spirit. You know, there's uh, chapter 14 where he says, I'm going to go away, but I'm going to send the comforter. Here's what he's going to do. Uh, chapter 15, I am the vine, you, uh, pardon me, yes, I am the vine, you're the branches, but the, the uh, power of the Holy Spirit is what comes into uh, the Christian, because in verse or chapter 14, he says, uh, he's going to dwell with you and he'll be in you, mm -hmm. giving you the grace, the strength, the power mm -hmm. to follow me. And then in chapter 16, again, uh, here's what the Spirit is going to do. So three chapters, that's a lot of space devoted to, uh, you know, one topic, if you will. That's right. Um, that's right. And we, we've talked about in, the, in Christian history, there's been all these debates about the, the nature of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and does the Son and the Spirit emanate from the Father, and what does that mean? Are they one being with three heads? And I personally just really don't get into all that stuff. No. Uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm aware of it, but for me, it's what the Bible says. What does the Word of God say? Here's a, a quote from uh, the book Acts of the Apostles, which I've read this book cover to cover about the history of the early church. And there's a chapter called The Gift of the Spirit. And on page 52, it says, The nature of the Holy Spirit is a mystery. Mm -hmm. Men cannot explain it because the Lord has not revealed it to them, his nature. Men, having fanciful views, may bring together passages of Scripture and put a human construction on them. But the acceptance of these views will not strengthen the church. Regarding such mysteries, which are too deep for human understanding, silence is, is golden. golden. That's right. So we don't need to define all the details about the Holy Spirit. And here's another, the same page says, to the repentant sinner hungering and thirsting for righteousness, the Holy Spirit reveals the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And uh, I've experienced this, that the Holy Spirit has shown me more of Jesus Christ. He's helped me to understand the Bible. He's convicted me of my own sins where I've violated God's law in different areas, and, th and he leads me to confess them, to trust in Jesus, and to experience more of God's forgiveness. And he also gives power. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus said that uh, when the Holy Spirit comes, you will get power. Mm -hmm. And that the power is to share Christ and also to resist the devil's temptations, which we all need to be doing. Yes, so it's not necessary to know the, the, the nature or the, uh, you know, how the Holy Spirit is made up. It's not, it's not essential for us to define exactly what, who, or what, et cetera, the Holy Spirit is. What is incumbent upon us is to receive the Holy Spirit. That's right. And to allow the Holy Spirit to work in us to say, when we turn to the left or to the right, no, no, this is the way. He's going to guide us into all truth. That's right. He's going to bring things to our remembrance. Just when we're being tempted, the Holy Spirit, like he did with you, going to prompt a, a Bible verse into our minds, and we're going to go, that's the Holy Spirit speaking to me, and so I'm going to go in this that's direction. That's right, exactly. And Kim, I have this strong conviction that we, sh that we in our church should do a lot less debating about the nature of the Holy Spirit uh, and instead, we should be praying for, for the, the Holy, Holy Spirit, yes. that's right, and studying the Bible, and like little children, we come to the Father in the name of the Son, and we pray for the Holy Spirit. And this is what uh, Jesus said when he said um, that the Father is more willing to give the Spirit 
than parents' good gifts to their That's children. Right. And he says, the Father is willing to give the Spirit to those that ask him. And so we need to be asking for the Holy Spirit. And that, I think, you know, the devil would rather have us be arguing over the nature of the Spirit right. than filled with the Spirit, because when That's we're right. filled with the Spirit, his kingdom is going to be shaking and trembling. That's right. We're told that we should talk less and pray more. Mm -hmm. uh, Acts 1 verse 8, Jesus says the Holy Spirit gives power. Uh, Revelation 5 verse 6, the Holy Spirit helps us to understand the Lamb of God. A uh, Romans 8 4, the Spirit helps us to keep God's commandments, to keep the law of righteousness. Galatians 5 22 and 23, the Holy Spirit gives us love, joy, and peace, and uh, patience, and the all the good things that we, we need in our characters. Revelation 22, verse 17 says, the Spirit and the bride say, come. come. That's right. It's like the Holy Spirit gives an altar call. Yes. And, and he speaks. He teaches. He, he can be grieved. He woos. Woo, woo, woos. Yeah. Woos us. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm just convinced that one of our greatest needs today is for more and more of the Holy Spirit. And those are all attributes of a person, to be able to share love, to be able to help our infirmities, uh, to shed abroad love into our hearts, not to grieve the Holy Spirit. He's going to show us things. He hears things. He speaks things. He teaches things. A, a power and influence doesn't do all That's that. Right. And, and, and uh, Jesus also warns about the unpardonable sin, which is the blasphemy against the oh, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a scary thing. And yes. I don't want to do that. No. So I'm not really interested in a bunch of debates about his nature. I just want to read my Bible. I want to come to my, my Heavenly Father. I want to do what Jesus said. And I, I want to pray for the Holy Spirit. And I want him to guide my mind and to teach me all truth. And that's his plan for you too. That's his plan for all of us. So uh, let's get that right as we're getting closer to the coming of Jesus. Let's spend more time praying for the Holy Spirit than debating the mysteries of his nature, which we'll never fully understand. May God help us, and we hope this, uh, this program has been a blessing to you. We hope you enjoyed this video. Before you go, check out these wonderful books for sharing. The Truth About the Sabbath is packed with information for anyone wanting to understand the Sabbath subject. Also, the 666 Beast Identified. What it means to you identifies both the beast and his strange number 666. What do the beast and his number have to do with you? Both are available in paperback and ebook versions from Whitehorse Media. And now for some breaking news. Whitehorse Media has just launched its new free online Bible school, Thunder in the Holy Land, filmed in Israel to help you and others discover the true teachings of God's Word. Jesus is coming soon and a wonderful adventure awaits those who embark on this journey. Time is so short and God's Word is needed as never before. To learn more, visit whitehorsemediabibleschool.com. That's whitehorsemediabibleschool.com. You'll be glad you did.